Hey, what's up? It's Tackless, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial that was requested by one of my fans on how to make a randomized enemy spawner. And I will say, I haven't fine-tuned this down to the point where it's perfect, but this is just how to get the concept working. Um, and I'd recommend turning down the range that enemies can aggro onto you, probably. Um, unless this is going to be like an arena-style thing. Or turn up the timers. I left the timers pretty short for the sake of this tutorial. So... There's no enemies right now by the big fiery wolf mouth, so I'm going to walk up towards it. And some goblins are going to spawn. If I stay here, no more enemies will spawn. Obviously, I have to deal with these enemies, but no more enemies will spawn. If I kill these guys, which is really quite easy. Wait a second. More enemies will spawn. I don't think trolls really fit out of the wolf mouth, so. Wow, trolls take a lot of hits to kill. Anyways, you, 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 you get the idea. Pretty much, if the player is not nearby and there's no enemies nearby, after a certain time period, more enemies will spawn. Oh my gosh, how many freaking hits does it take to kill these things? Whatever. Let's say if I led the enemies away, if that other troll would follow me. Come on, troll. There. No. If I led the enemies away, and then killed them, and then came back, then more would spawn as well. Pretty much as long as the player is nearby, and there's no enemies, after a period of time, another set of random enemies will spawn. Alright, so let's go ahead and create this. I'm going to delete all these guys. And we're going to pick some new enemies. Let's go to our objects. Let's pick... Um, dog Bill Bird. These things look menacing. Scale him up so he looks threatening. And then we're going to pick... Uh, zombie female. It's only fair. I had a zombie male before. Then we're gonna pick rat, because what RPG is complete without having some rats to kill at the beginning? And then what else? Um. Man, that piranha just looks angry. I'm not gonna do a piranha though. Let's do. Goblin Scavenger. Next thing what we're going to do is I'm going to change out all these brains so they're all enemy brains. So red is an enemy brain. Bird is enemy brain. Zombie is enemy brain. I'm doing this all because not all of these are enemies. Like, the rat and the bird aren't by, by default enemies. Um, so I'm just changing them so that they're all the same brain. Though, obviously, you can have different brains. They don't all have to be exactly the same. So they're all fairly uniform in brain now. Let's go ahead and make them all templates now. Brain, template, true. One button. Alright, so they're all templates. Now this is my spawner. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Grab a new logic cube. Put it in the wolf's mouth. Right about there. Alright, so... This brain's going to be a little complicated. So if you don't understand it, just roll with it. But hopefully I'll be able to explain it so that you will be able to understand it. Step one... We're going to have the brain be able to detect how close the player is. Um, oh, one thing worth mentioning. My player is just a default third person player brain. I'll go ahead and delete that line of code. This is all just default third person player brain. One thing we're going to do is we're going to add a line of code that designates the player as an object variable called player equals 
me. There we go. Forgot to mention that. We're going to need that for this brain. Um, all right. So when global player is objects closer than, oh, let's do like 10. And then when, we're going to make a new variable called spawn. When spawn equals true, we're going to do started to, and we're going to make a new numeric variable called enemy type. Enemy type equals a random number between one, two, four, and this one's important as integer. If you don't have that, that'll break everything and drive you absolutely insane as to why your code's not working. Um, obviously, you can have more enemies than just four. You could have as many as you wanted. Just four is a pretty good pretty good round for me. Um, so we're going to copy this variable. When enemy type is equal to one, then we're going to create an object variable called enemy. Now let's do spawn, enemy spawn. That works. Enemy spawn equals, and then we're going to do our in-world picker, and we're going to pick the rat. Then we're going to copy this line a couple of times. Two instead of one. And instead of the rat, we're going to do the bird. Copy that. Instead of two, we'll do three. And instead of the bird, we'll do the zombie. And instead of three, we'll do four. And instead of the zombie, we'll do the goblin. So this is how the randomizer works. This will pick out one of these four enemies at random. Then at the bottom here, now this this line of code is optional. This is if you want more than one en enemy to spawn. If you only want to spawn one enemy, then you don't have to do this. You could just do started to. That's it. But I'm, I'm going to have a randomized number of enemies spawn as well. So for the duration of one um, sorry, I messed that up. Duration random number. One, two, four. Once again, as integer. And then in frames. Then we're going to create our object variable enemy spawn. All right, so because of the way the Project Spark code works, it'll only spawn one creature per frame. So it'll spawn one to four creatures in this time frame because it's one to four frames. And it'll pick between one to four. So it could be two, it could be three, it could be one, you know the drill. Next, we're going to do countdown timer four in frames. And then we're going to do spawn equals false okay so that's pretty much the cycle as to how to get it to spawn now how to get it so that it won't spawn while there's enemies nearby and how to get it to spawn anyways let's just finish up this code I'm gonna go to the top create a new line of code and do uh, not started to once come on work with me here once spawn equals true because all variables especially boolean variables default to false we're just setting it so that once it'll be true this way it doesn't have to work it doesn't have to uh look at timers it doesn't have to do countdowns or any of that for the very first time it spawns then when spawn is equal to false as it will after the first time it spawns creatures when not detect we're going to go to objects we're going to go to created objects then we're going to do a countdown timer we're going to do a countdown timer of 
Let's do like 10. Countdown timer 10. Spawn equals true. There we go. That should be the whole brain. All right, let's give it a test. All right, so the player gets close, and a couple two goblin or two zombies spawn. Let's go ahead and kill them. No zombies have a decent amount of health. And then if I stay here, wait 10-ish seconds. Then a bunch of rats spawn that. <laughs> that actually looks pretty cool, how the rats are riding each other. Now if I was to guide these rats over here. Eh, if I could outrun the rats, it would be better, but let's go ahead and kill the rats. Hopefully not have the rats kill me. Wow, rats have a lot of health for their size. There, kill the rat. Now we can go back. And another a bird spawned. What an ugly bird. But did you notice how, because it didn't detect any enemies, there was no 10 second timer when I came back. It immediately spawned. Because that 10 second timer had already completed while the created enemies were outside of its range. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, this is how you can create a random enemy spawner. Um, if you're looking to create a random set of enemies every time it spawns, as in one rat, one bird, two zombies, and three goblins, or whatever, that's um, quite a bit more complicated, but it is doable. But I'm not going to go into it in this tutorial, so... Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Um, thank you for recommending it, or uh, suggesting it. One of my fans suggested this. So, um, yeah. If you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys later.